Ranger Bill, warrior of the woodland, struggling against extreme odds, traveling dangerous trails, fighting the many enemies of nature. This is the job of the guardian of the forest, Ranger Bill. Pouring rain, freezing cold, blistering heat, snow, floods, bears, rattlesnakes, mountain lions. Yes, all this in exchange for the satisfaction and pride of a job well done. There are two schools of thought on how to handle the teenage gang problem. One group says, use the strong arm of the law. The other group maintains that the Christian approach is best. We'll find out which works best in Naughty Pine, where there are two gangs of teenage lads who are waging war on each other. Here's the story, Mrs. Kane Wins a War. Let's go to the back of Mrs. Kane's large home on the outskirts of Naughty Pine. This lady's house is on the front of a 10-acre plot of ground. The back area is covered with trees, rocks, bushes, and darkness. For some strange reason, the two teenage gangs have picked this area to wage their frequent battles. Right now, another fight is in the making as the two gangs of boys creep toward each other across the back of Mrs. Kane's property. The moon is up, and the snow on the ground makes the battleground pretty well illuminated. Art and Phil of the river gang take the lead as they advance against the hill mob. Hey, I can see the hill gang now, Phil. Yeah, Moose is leading the way. Let's set a trap for him, Art. Okay, what'll we do? We'll get alongside the back of Mrs. Kane's chicken house. When Moose and the rest of the guys pass by, we'll jump from the rear. Yeah, that should work keen. Let's get going. Hey, you guys, follow us. Yeah, okay. they come. Let them walk by and then we'll jump them. Pass the word, you guys. Don't jump till we tell you. Here they are. Quiet now. I wonder where that river gang is. Get them! Come on, hit them! Come on! Get this guy! Get off! Get him back! Come on! Get this guy! It's a good thing Mrs. Kane called us when she first saw the kids. And they're battling each other's ears off back there. O'Rourke, take your men and cut around behind them. Okay, Carol, we're going on the double. The rest of you men come with me. You've got to stop this before somebody gets seriously hurt or even killed. Get him again. Son, once more. Come on. We've got to look out. Beat it, the cop. Let's get out of here. Come on, let's go. All right, let's quiet down or I'll take you all in. Hey, you stop squirming around like a worm on a fish hook and behave. Make him behave, O'Rourke. Don't you be worrying about that, Cal. I've got five of me own, just like these scalawags. I know how to make them toe the mark. I'm not going to ask you tough guys what you're doing because you're, you'll are you only double talk me to death. But listen and listen hard. I'm running out of patience, and the next time this happens, you're going to jail. Next time, I start biting instead of barking. Hey, you guys, pipe down. We ain't gonna let the cops scare us, are we, fellas? Yeah, no, that old lady either. She's the one that turned us in, sure as shooting. We'll get even with old Mrs. Kane for calling the cops. Let's do it the same time we get the Hill Gang. Yeah, how about tomorrow night? Keep it under your hat before the, so the cops won't find out. I'll challenge Moose in school tomorrow. If the Hill Gang ain't turned yellow by now, they might show up. Yeah, what do you want? We're inviting you and your gang to finish what we started last night. Is that right? What about the cops? What's the matter, Moose? Don't tell me you're chicken. Don't you call me a chicken, Phil. I'll clean up the hall with you right now. Yeah, you and what army? Don't forget, there's two of us. That's right. Where's your gang, or are they scared too? You'll be there tonight, and I'll show you who's yellow. You'll have a mouthful of floating molars and a couple of fat eyes. We're going to take care of that old lady, too, at the same time we take care of you guys. Phil, are you busy 
busy right now? Obviously, the time I wasn't. Come on in, Jack. Grab a chair. Oh, peace and quiet at last. <laughs> I'm glad I'm not a school teacher, Jack. My job's a pushover compared to yours. Oh, it's not that bad. This has been one of those days when it would have been better to have stayed in bed. <laughs> That's so? What's wrong? Well, I don't know exactly. I heard rumors that the Hill and the River Gangs might battle it out soon on the back of Mrs. Kane's property. Oh. Those young fellas aren't going to be satisfied until somebody gets seriously hurt. Then they'll be in trouble. Were you able to find out when this scrap is going to take place? No. No, I wasn't. I only overheard snatches of conversation and a few disconnected remarks here and there. But adding them up, they spell trouble. There's a lot of bad blood running between those two gangs. So far, we've been able to keep it from spilling over inside of school. Yeah, I know. You and the rest of the teachers have done a fine job of keeping the warring tribes under control during school hours. Bill, I must be on my way. Exams come up tomorrow, and I have a lot of work to do. I surely wish you could do something to put an end to this nonsense before those lads live a lifetime of regret. I'll have a talk with Cal. Perhaps he knows more about this. Well, do whatever you think best. I came to you because you seem to have a knack for working these problems out for everybody's good. Oh, thanks for your confidence. I'll follow this through and see what can be done with the young fellas. Thanks, Bill. Well, let me know how things turn out. If I can help, just tell me what to do. I'll do that, Jack. Bye. Bill, wait a minute. What is it, Jack? Well, there's one thing I forgot to mention. Oh? What? I also have good reason to believe that the lads may take revenge on Mrs. Kane for calling the police. That is, they seem to think she did. I'm glad you told me that. This makes a horse of another color. I'll get the sheriff on it right away. That's as much as I can tell you, Cal. I don't imagine it's much help. It sure is, Bill. My men and I broke up their fight last night. I sure would give ten dollars to know when the next one's coming off. Yeah, I can imagine. Bill, uh, I'd appreciate your help. You, you have a great knack for coming up with the answer to this sort of thing. How about it? Well, I'd be glad to help, Cal. I think we ought to go out and see Mrs. Kane and tell her of the possible danger she's in. Oh, that's good for a starter. Mm -hmm. Let's get going. Time's running out. Imagine those young toughs threatening revenge on a nice elderly lady. Now, gentlemen, I appreciate your concern for me, but really I can take care of myself. I wish I were sure of that, Mrs. Kane. I'd be glad to station a couple of men out here until this blows over. You'd better listen to him, ma'am. Those lads get pretty rough. I'm listening, Bill. But I'm not going to pay any heed to the sheriff. I think he's an old worrywart. Now, Mrs. Kane, uh, it'll be too late for me to protect you and your property after something happens. Now, please, please listen to reason. Sheriff, what those young men need is love and attention. Why, I've even thought of inviting them in for tea and cookies. You, you, you what? You heard me, Calvin. You aren't deaf. I've raised boys of my own, you know. They were just as rough and tumble as the lad you had to the fight on my back lot last evening. I called you because I didn't want them to hurt each other. But, but, Mrs. Kane, I... Now, don't you butt me. You just march right out of here and take care of enforcing the law. I'll take care of those young lads... You see when I show you that I'm right. All right, Mrs. Kane, you win. But don't say I didn't warn you if anything happens. Let's go, Bill. Right. Good day, Mrs. Kane. Goodbye, Mrs. Kane. I hope you'll be safe. <laughs> you kind of took a beating, old boy. What do you mean, you? <laughs> didn't see you making any home runs or even stealing third base. <laughs> <laughs> right. But at least I admit it. Uh, come on, Cal. Cheer up. 
Perhaps we're barking up the wrong tree. Yeah, I hope so, Bill. She's a fine lady. I, I'd hate to see her get hurt. I don't see the law around. Do you, Phil? No, they're not around. Tub and Lefty have been watching since after supper. They haven't seen hiding her hair of the cops. It's safe. Good. Let's get over to the chicken house and fix those windows. We'll show that old lady she can't rat on us and get away with it. Yeah. Pick up rocks on the way. We gotta hurry before Moose and his gang get to the joint first. <laughs> I don't see the hill gang. We got plenty of time to take care of those windows. Yeah. Send a couple of the guys to take care of the house windows. Not all of them. Just a couple of small ones. We got to scare this old lady good. Hey, Tub, Lefty, go take care of the house. Just a couple of small windows. Okay, okay. you guys, this is far enough. Get ready with the rocks, you guys. Let them go. Make it good. Hey, the river rats beat us to it. Let's get them. Use your rocks on them. Hey, just rest up. Boys, boys, stop this fighting. Stop this instant deal. Let's get out of here. The old lady's been hit. Let's go. Let's get going. Come on. Come on. Phil, hold it up. What are you stopping for? We gotta get out of here. Phil, we can't leave Mrs. Kane lying on the ground. Why not? If we go back there, we'll be in real trouble. You mean we'll be in a lot more trouble if we don't? She might be hurt bad. We can't just leave her there. Yeah, I guess you're right. Let's go back. There she is on the ground. Why, she must be hurt bad to be still laying there. She's been hit on the head with a rock. Yeah, and she's bleeding. You go in the house and call the sheriff. Tell him to get a doctor. The sheriff? Yeah, I ain't afraid of him. Hurry up. If this old lady dies, we'll be in tr more trouble than we know what to do with. It's Mrs. Kane, laying on the ground. Uh, take a look at her, Doc. You two lads stay right where you are. Keep an eye on them, O'Rourke. Sure, no, and they won't be getting away from O'Rourke. She hurt bad, Doc? Well, I don't know yet, son. Uh, let's get her into the house before she freezes to death. Now, that's Bill. Let's wait a minute, and then we can use a three-man lift. I want O'Rourke free so these two toughs don't get away. Warn Mrs. Kane that she might get hurt. Now, you smart Alex will pay for this. How do you feel now, Mrs. Kane? I feel fine, Doctor. My head aches a little, but outside of that, I, I feel all right. Well, that's good news, Mrs. Kane. I've got two of the hoodlums right here. I'll lock them up and then get the rest and haul them in, too. You'll do no such thing, Calvin. We didn't hit you on purpose, Mrs. Kane. You must have walked into the rock. Yeah, we didn't know who threw the rock that hit you. Believe me, we didn't mean to hurt you. We know that you plan to get even with Mrs. Kane. Yeah, but all we were going to do is break some windows, not hurt her. I don't believe your story. I'm taking you two tough guys in just the same. You can tell your story to the judge. Don't you dare do that, Sheriff. I'll not press charges, and you look awfully foolish trying to hold these boys without a charge. Besides, Art and Phil are the only ones who stayed to help me. Certainly that means that they're not all bad. Well, I, I didn't know about that. Well, she has a strong point, Cal. If she won't press charges, you'll be up a tree. Well, well, all right, I'll, I'll bide my time, but... But I'll get them sooner or later. Mrs. Kane, why do you refuse to press charges against these lands? 
They and their gang have committed assault and battery. Bill, do you see the pictures on the mantel? Yes, ma'am, I do. The older man is my husband. The two younger men are my sons. My husband died after World War I because of his wounds and also from the effects of gas. My sons were killed in World War II. Gentlemen, the men in my family died because of violence and fighting. Perhaps they'd be alive today if the world had more love and kindness in it. You're right there, Mrs. Kane. I, I'm sorry to hear about your husband and sons, but uh, what's this got to do with these lads? Uh, Bill, will you hand me my Bible, please? Be glad to, Mrs. Kane. Thank you. The Beatitudes tells what I mean. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. Blessed are ye when men shall revile you and persecute you, and shall say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Gentlemen, this is my plan for showing these lads where they should walk. Our Lord is the very essence of love and kindness. and He came to bring joy and peace and love to all men. What these two young men need is some of the very things the Lord brought into this world. Let me try the Lord's way with these young men. I know it'll work. I see your point, Mrs. Kane, and it's, it's well taken. <laughs> I'll admit I'm a tough cop, but I, I guess I have a heart that beats under this badge. Mrs. Kane, thanks. We won't forget this. That's right, ma'am. We'll talk to the other guys and tell them to lay off. You've been very kind to us. Thank you. I've never seen such a change come over anybody as what's come over these two lads. Aye, Carolyn, that's a miracle you're watching. When a person radiates love like Mrs. Kane does, some of it's bound to be rubbing off on those who stick around. So now you know the whole story, guys. I say we ought to lay off fighting and leave Mrs. Kane alone. Yeah, I say that too. And anybody that doesn't agree will get a mouth full of floating molars. Mrs. Kane is a fine old lady. You say that none of us is in trouble, Phil? That's right. Mrs. Kane even talked the sheriff out of taking us in. I think we should tell Moose and his gang to lay off too. And no more fighting on Mrs. Kane's property. I'll tell Moose and his bunch in school tomorrow. If he don't like it, we'll make him. What a bunch of sissies you guys turned out to be An old lady says a couple of sweet words to you And you fall all over yourself I'm just telling you, Moose, lay off Yeah, and who's gonna make me? I still gotta get even for that old lady calling the cops. Yeah, you just try it and see what happens. Well, I'm gonna try it and you won't stop me. That's what you think. We'll be watching Mrs. Kane's place. If you guys come near, you'll go away a bloody mess. Ta! Ah, you guys are turning chicken. You wouldn't start anything because you'd be in the doghouse with that old lady. But you can be sure we're gonna get even. You'll get even, all right. Even with the top of the ground. Stay away, Moose. I'm warning you, stay away. <laughs> You guys be quiet so Mrs. Kane doesn't know we're out here. She might be worried if she finds out why we're here. Okay, Art. I'll pass the word. I don't see any signs of the Hill Gang yet. We better not see them. But Moose isn't chicken either. Yeah, I know. But he'll wish he was so he can fly out of here if he tries to hurt Mrs. Kane. Shh. Here they come, through the trees. Where? I see them. 
to your left, Art. Oh, yeah. So Moose can't take advice. Let's go after him and catch him way out back. Yeah. Come on, let's move out. Come on, get him. Hey, hey, the cops! Let's get out of here! Hold it! That ain't the cops! It's an ambulance! Listen to the siren, it's different. You're right. Come on, let's find out what's going on. Hey, it's Mrs. Kane, and she's out like a light. What's wrong with her, Doc? I'm not sure yet. Uh, Looks like a brain hemorrhage. You mean she's bleeding inside her head from that rock? I'm not sure, son. But the blow from the rock could cause this. We're all set, Doc. Let's go. Boy, I wonder what's going to happen. Yeah, I wonder what's going to happen. Take it into the hospital. Pipe down, you guys. What's the matter with the old lady? Yeah. What do you care, Moose? She's bleeding inside her head. Yeah, from the suck on the noggin she got from the rock. Do you think she's going to die? We ain't no doc. But if she does, you guys are in as deep as we are. We'd better go over to the hospital and see how she makes out. I ain't going to no hospital. We can't help the doc now. No, no, but we could show that we want her to get better. Not me. I'm lambing out of here. You're yellow, Moose. You're as yellow as a banana. Oh, yeah? I'll show you guys... Come on, gang, let's go to the hospital. All right, let's go. Yeah, come on, let's go. Which hospital is she taking? Let's go. Come on, here. Hello, Bill Jefferson. Bill, this is Cal. Oh, yes, Cal. What's up? Yeah, the doc just called me and said he's going to do emergency surgery on Mrs. Kane. Hmm? Brain hemorrhage. Yeah? Also told me all the kids from both gangs are in the waiting room. I'm going over there. If she dies, I'll have those smart alecks in the clink before they know what hit them. I'll be right over. See you at the hospital. Don't any of you monkeys try to leave this room. I'll be sitting right here by the door. Bill, what's going to happen to us if she dies? Yeah, we didn't do it on purpose. How are we going to find out who's to blame? Or will we all have to go to jail? When are we going to know whether she's going to pull Whoa through? Whoa there, fellas. Whoa there. One question at a time. If Mrs. Kane dies, the sheriff will arrest all of you, and then it'll be up to the judge to decide the outcome. Now, I know you fellas didn't do this on purpose, but you'll have to admit that you were warned by the sheriff and told to stop your fights. I've asked the doctor to tell us one way or the other what's happened. How are we going to stay here with nothing to do? The oper- operation might take hours and hours. Well, I'm sure it won't take longer than four hours, Art. Four hours? Man alive, that's, that's a long time. What do we do? All of you fellas have gone to church or Sunday school at one time or another, haven't you? Oh, yeah, sure. Well, what's that got to do with this? You fellas can help Mrs. Kane by praying. And while you're praying, you can ask the Lord to save you from your sins and make clean-cut lads out of you. How long's it been since Doc started operating? Half an hour. Boy, it seems like half a day. Bill, I'd never believe it if I didn't see it. Who would ever think these roughnecks could pray like they've been doing? Perhaps we're seeing a miracle, Cal. This is the only way the Lord could get them to hold still long enough to deal with them. They've been here for two and a half hours. We've been waiting for three and a half hours now. How much longer is it going to take? I don't know. I think we lost. Maybe all the praying we did ain't no good. Yeah, maybe it's because we ain't been the right kind of guys. Hey, it's a doc. Hey, doc. Hey, hey, how's how's go? What's the word, doc? doc? Hey, What's happening? Huh? How's she going to be, doc? You can go home, fellas. Mrs. Kane's going to be all right.
It's so nice of you two to escort me home, gentlemen. We're glad to do it, Mrs. Kane. My mother's got the house all ready, and she's going to stay with you until you're on your feet again. Oh, how nice. Oh, my, the place looks different. <laughs> In uh, what respect, Mrs. Kane? Why, the walks are shoveled and the firewood stack. <laughs> my, the whole place looks so neat and clean. Now, who went to all the trouble to do this for me? Mom! Bill! What's this all about? We just want you to show you that we think you're wonderful, Mrs. Kane. We're sure glad you're coming home from the hospital for good. Well, isn't this nice? These are the lads who fixed up around here, Mrs. Kane. Well, thank you so much. It looks fine, but, but what are you doing all this for? Because you did so much for us, Mrs. Kane. You were kind to us when we should have been punished. You spoke nice to us when we should have been yelled at. Yes, ma'am. We've talked with Moose and his gang, and we've decided to quit fighting and join gangs so we can do good. Help folks, just like you helped us. Praise the Lord. And now a bite of faith, hope, and love. These three... But the greatest of these is love. Boys and girls, I don't think that there's anything I can say that will add to Mrs. Kane's quotation from the Bible. We'll see you next week for more adventure with... again. Our program today gives me, Ranger Bill, just a little time to talk to you moms and dads about our adventure stories and why we're on the air. We all know that every time a boy or girl listens to one of our programs, he gets some impression of the Christian life and the character of the people involved. So we must be constantly alert to guard the image that's presented to make it realistic and truthful, neither setting up false ivory tower heroes for fellas and gals to aspire to, or creating the impression that Christianity is an impossible goal in this day and age. We also try to present Christians as people, something which they are. The faults of a Christian don't have to be glossed over. He's human too. So we try to present to you, the listener, a story that, from your point of view, is a factual photograph of a way of life, namely the Christian way, and showing individuals living, seeing, understanding this way of life, or maybe missing it completely. Let's all be honest before God so that truth can survive, and our young people will turn out to be the good citizens and real Christians that we want them to be.